Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because of His blessing, we are able to attend this event. Secondly, may salawat and salam always be given to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his family, his companion, and may Allah bless every one of us. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Hello, I'm Nelly as the moderator in this webinar with the theme technology as an implementation of today's language learning. Before we begin, let me introduce our presenters. So to all presenters, you can wave your hand when I call you. First, we hear it. Hello. Sri Wahyuni. Zakiatu Rahma. Ainina Rahmia. Elsa Mayora, Wulanilita, Awi Azhar, and Dina Nurul Fadila. So totally we have eight presenters in this webinar. Besides, I'd like to read the regulation in this webinar. The first one is this webinar will last for an hour and a half or 90 minutes. The only language used to communicate is English. All participants are suggested to take notes during the presentation. All participants must turn off the audio during the presentation. The presentation will be held in five to seven minutes for each presenter. The moderator will set time to remind the presenter. The Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. Question can be typed in in the chat box since the early presentation. So anyone interested in talking directly to the presenter is pleased to raise your hand first. Then we will facilitate you if we, have, we still have time. If you couldn't get your answer, the presenters will send the answer via email. So that's it for the regulation. Now, please welcome to our first presenter. Aki Rizkia Maulida will deliver about learning vocabulary effectively with Duolingo. For Aki, Time is yours. Right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to the moderator that has given me the opportunity. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? Hope you are in a good condition. All right, everyone, allow me to introduce myself first. I'm Akiris Giamolida, and today I'd like to bring a topic about learning vocabulary effectively with joining room. Next slide, please. All right, in this opportunity, I divide my presentation into three sections, namely, one, what is vocabulary learning, two, what is vocabulary learning on Duolingo, and three, how to use Duolingo on smartphone mobile. Let's begin with the first topic, which is what is vocabulary learning. Next slide, please. All right. According to Restrepo Remus 2015, vocabulary learning is the process of acquiring reading blocks in second language acquisition. In learning of foreign language, vocabulary plays an important role. Even though the student realizes the importance of vocabulary when learning language, but most of them learn vocabulary possibly due to several factors. First, they consider the teacher's explanation for meaning or definition, pronunciation, spelling, and grammatical functions are boring. Second, the students only think of vocabulary learning as knowing the primary meaning of new words. Therefore, they ignore all, uh, all other functions of the words. Third, students usually only acquire new vocabulary through new words in their textbooks or when given by teachers during classroom lessons. And the last, many of students do not want to take risks in applying what they have learned. These are some problems that must be solved. And one solution that can be done is to apply media in vocabulary learning. According to Indra Sariat 2018, media is one thing that can convey information between the source and the recipient. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the next topic, which is what is vocabulary learning on Duolingo? Next slide, please. Yeah, all right. According to Ahmed 2016, there are several language applications available. One of them is the Duolingo application, which can be a media that can be used in learning English vocabulary because it is one of the most popular language learning applications among the public. The use of mobile applications, for example, games as a learning media by educators or teachers can create an atmosphere that can increase students' motivation for learning English, especially vocabulary. All right. Based on the problems mentioned in the previous, one of the English vocabulary teaching techniques is using Duolingo. According to CAP uh, 12, uh, 2012, in Iran at all 2020, stated that their interest in choosing Duolingo is that the application uses gamification techniques that can then they make it easy and fun to use. So, vocabulary learning on Duolingo is a learning design like a game. 
it is attractive and easy to absorb because the gamification technique used very powerful to make many people learn knowledge. Then using the Duolingo is easier, effective, and more fun to use, especially the chosen English to be start. All right, according to Monday 1999, stated that Duolingo is preferred than regular assignment and media because of its convenience. It means that Duolingo is easy to use and more interesting, so it will be comfortable to be one of the media that used in teaching in the classroom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the last topic, which is uh, how to use Duolingo on smartphone mobile. Next slide, please. Yeah, all right. There are several steps to using the Duolingo application on your smartphone mobile, including, yeah, as you can see on the screen, the first step is please download and install the Duolingo application on your smartphone by opening the Play Store then searching for Duolingo. And then after the application installed, you just open it. Then there will be two options. Namely, the first option is Baru di Duolingo. This is for users who are first time using the Duolingo application. And the second option is Aku Sudah Punya Aku. Meanwhile, this is for users who already have a Duolingo account, but previously I installed the Duolingo and now, and now want to use it again. So for those of you who previously had an account, just enter your username or email and password to access the Duolingo. All right, the next step for the first time users, you have to go through some, some questions first, like the picture I included on the slide before using the Duolingo. Fill in the questions according to your goals using the Duolingo application. And then the next, select the learning target as desired and choose the initial path if you are just learning English for the first time. However, if you have mastered English a little, you can choose the second option. And if you choose the second option, uh, you will be given instructions to find more your level, namely by clicking more like this. And then the next step, you will be shown some English quizzes. Please answer these questions correctly. If your answer is correct, a green color will appear below with the word hebat, bagus or keren. However, if your answer is wrong, a red color will appear below with the word salah. And the correct answer will also be shown there. If all the questions have been answered, then you can create a account profile photo. And last, fill in some of your data info such as age, name, email address, and password. And now you have successfully used the Duolingo application. You can practice answering other English questions on the Duolingo application at any time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I got several conclusions here, namely, First, the learning a new language means learning its vocabulary. Then mastering vocabulary enables the students to be mastered in English language skills. And second, use of mobile applications such as Duolingo as a learning media by educators or teachers can create an atmosphere that can increase students' motivation for learning English, especially vocabulary. Next slide, please. Yeah, all right. So in the future, teachers to manipulate, uh, need to manipulate several strategies to support the vocabulary learning process for the students. Last but not least, there is a quote from David Crystal, vocabulary is a matter of word building as well as producing. All right, everyone, that's all from me. Thank you very much for your great attention. I'm Akedis Kamarida, and I'll give it back to the moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Aki, for the excellent presentation. It's such a great beginning for this session. So I'll remind you to, to all participants to fill the attendance that provided on the chat box. And if you have any question for Aki, you can type it on the chat box too, and we'll answer the, uh, in the question in Q&A session. All right, now we are moving to the second presenter. Si Wahyuni will present about the use of active reading strategies in the reading process for three, seven minutes from now. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks thank you for the moderator and thanks to the organizer of this event who has given me a wonderful opportunity today. Uh, good morning everyone and welcome and thank you so much for joining this session with team technology as implementation of the language learning. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Rewa Yuni from English Education Department 2020. And I'm here today would like to present a topic about reading with the title is the use of active reading strategies in reading process. Uh, I'd like to share with you the strategies which can help you in the reading process. Next slide, please. And in my presentation, I'll begin with general information about reading. 
uh, then we will look at the definition of reading process and, and active reading. And last, about implementation of active reading strategy. Next slide. Uh, first of all, what do you know about reading? Uh, what is reading actually? You can type in the chat box. All right. Uh, I'd like to give you an overview, overview of reading itself. Uh, reading is about understanding written text. It is a complex activity that involves perception and thought. And then the definition by the expert. First, according to the lecture in 2009, reading is crucial means of gaining knowledge and the student need to acquire effective strategies to cope with reading demand. Furthermore, arguably, uh, in 2015, defined reading is the most complex activity that involves phonological and semantic processing. Next slide. And then what is reading process and uh, what is active reading? Uh, according to Dr. Red Lyon, uh, he said, when you look at the reading and its complexity, we're looking at this integration of a number of fairly complex cognitive and linguistic skills. You got to know the sound, got to link sound to the letters, and could rapidly apply at least a whole page of print. And then as we're reading, we have to structure ourselves. We got to ask questions about what we're reading. We have got to summarize uh, as we go along and also good to predict what's coming next. Then uh, the definition of active reading. According to Jos Gaston in Masharif Pufa et al. 2021, Active reading is defined as a process in which students are actively engaged with the text they are reading. Uh, as just Gaston explained, in the active reading, students are absorbed in the reading. Uh, the learners criticize and ask questions while reading, rereading, and re-examining the text in order to develop their own understanding of the text and to formulate their own opinion about the text content. And then, next slide. So here is five active reading strategies, including this KWL Cornell Note Taking, SQ3R, and SQ4R reading strategy. Uh, all right, then how the implementation of these active reading strategies in pre reading phase, where reading phase, and post reading phase. First, there is the reading strategy. Uh, students first need to pay attention to the title of the text and all its heading. They they should then carefully read the introduction and every sentence in the section. After that, they can look through the visual and vocabulary needed, pay close attention to the end of article or chapter, and then summarize their thinking. The second uh, reading strategy is KWL reading strategy. Stand for what do you know about the topic? Uh, students are encouraged to use their background knowledge. And then what do you want to know? Uh, this step can be used to help students to predict what the text will be about. And last is what did you learn about the topic? It's helped the improved student reading comprehension and teach uh, them to summarize the information learned. And then for note taking, uh, for note taking is used in the academic setting, which helps students to better understand, further memorize the content of the subject learned uh, while listening to the lecture or exploring the information independently. Uh, in the pre-reading phase, students are encouraged to record the information in the note taking division of the paper. And then the while reading part, which is defined here as recite, is not exactly reading, but rather restoring the information following the questionnaires. And then they should do reflecting and reviewing during the post reading phase. Next is SQ3R reading strategy. Uh, SQ3R is defined as a reading or study formula designed to help process and increase retention of written information. And the, in the pre-reading parts, uh, students survey the information and formulate related questions to provide better concentration on and understanding of the text. In the while reading, students read the whole text, and then in the post reading, students are encouraged to review the information gained and to recite it. Plus, is strategy. Uh, SQ, SQ4R is considered as a more advanced reading strategy since it has wider scale of post reading activity, which in some searches are defined as recite, review, and read, in other searches as respond, review, and record step. Uh, the essential points here that uh, after reading and reciting the main point of the text based on uh, the question having been formulated after the text survey for better concentration and understanding the text, uh, students are encouraged to relate the information gain to other searches, that is to other texts, to their background information, and to their prior knowledge. And then next slide. 
So my conclusion of my presentation today is active reading strategies, including pre reading, that is brief reading strategy, pre and post reading, KWL, pre while and post reading, corner note taking, SQ3R, and SQ4R reading strategy can be implemented to monitor reading comprehension and understand written text during reading process. And all right, there are also my references that support my presentation. Uh, that's bring me to the end of my presentation. That's all that I can share with you today about the use of active reading strategies in the reading process. Thank you so much for your kind attention and for having me today. I will leave you to enjoy the day and I wish you a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Ray, for the great presentation. That was such an interesting topic that discussed about the definition, the process, and also some strategies of reading. All right, I'll remind you, maybe some of you uh, haven't filled the attendance form or the link provided on the chat box. Now we will turn the time over to the third presenter. Here we have Zakiatul Rahma, who will deliver about memorizing vocabulary with space repetition. For Zaki, time is yours. All right, um, thanks to the moderator for hosting the meeting and giving me the time. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this session. My name is Zakia Turahma, and I would like to bring a topic about memorizing vocabulary with spaced repetition. Um, next slide, please. All right, I divided my presentation into three sections. The first is the definition of spaced repetition. The second one is the benefit of spaced repetition for memorizing vocabulary. And the last one is about how to use space repetition to memorize vocabulary. All right, next slide. <clears throat> Let's begin uh, with the first section. Um, have you ever heard about space repetition? All right, um, as said by Lewis in 2020, space repetition is a way to repeat information so that you remember it effectively. Uh, space repetition uh, reduces the forgetting rate, which relates to NUR in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, space repetition in learning is a product made out uh, of human leg of capacity in retaining information and attempts to reduce the forgetting rate. Space repetition is the technique uh, that uses repetition uh, with space or frequent as his side of his. <clears throat> space repetition is a memory technique that involves reviewing and recalling information at optimal spacing intervals until the information is learned at a sufficient level. Uh, this technique helps your brain uh, remember more information as it keeps uh, the material fresh in your mind and forces you to use active recall. Space repetition can be applied to any form of education from grade school math problems up to graduate computer algorithms. All right, uh, then Noor uh, et al. in 2021 said that space repetition in learning language is proven in enhancing memory uh, retention in which uh, can contribute to positive performance and can help uh, maximize student language performance. <clears throat> this uh, reduces the time spent studying while increasing the brain's ability to retain memories. This is why the repetition, the space repetition is one of the effective techniques to use when learning vocabulary. All right, next slide. Uh, let's move to the second session is about uh, the benefits of space repetition. For the first, uh, space repetition uh, helps your brain build memorize that have high levels of stored strength, increases the time uh, spent actively rehearsing a memory in your brain rather than passively consuming information and allows for consolidation of new information with uh, all related knowledge that has already been stored in long-term memory. Uh, the second, this technique makes it easier to retrieve and recall the information at later dates. Having a predictable space repetition schedule teaches your brain uh, to predict when it will next see the material and respond with greater alertness and attention. And the last uh, of benefit space repetition, <clears throat> 
it making it uh, easier for memorizing vocabulary or information in the time frame to be encoded into long-term memory. And the technique allows you to break up large tasks into smaller chunks. For example, <clears throat> break one chapter into three sections. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, let's move to the last question, which is about how you use space repetition to memorize vocabulary. Uh, one low takeaway is to create a space repetition system using flashcards. For example, uh, here is how you do it. I cheated by Lewis in 2020. First, create a flashcard for the words uh, you want to learn. Each learning episode must have a target and you must achieve it. Then uh, group the flashcard according to how, uh, how well you know them. Create several groups, as many as you like. You might start with three. Uh, make the first group uh, of cards that you know, uh, that you don't know well. Uh, the second group of cards that you know, and the third group of cards that you will have uh, mastered. Then group uh, the flashcard uh, according to how well uh, then uh, go to groups and test yourself and on vocabulary. When you test yourself and remember the word correctly, move the cards up one group. If you get the wrong card, uh, re-enter the first group. Um, study the first uh, group most often. This is the card you don't know very well. You can study the second group uh, less often and the third group uh, even less so. Uh, the idea is that you study the cards you don't know more often than you do. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, finally, the third section of my presentation is done. Uh, for the end, I would like to highlight that space repetition is the technique or way to repeat information so that you remember it effectively. This technique uh, can be applied to all subjects because with this technique, uh, students will more easily uh, remember the lesson. Uh, space repetition is important because it is an evidence-based technique that helps your brain retain information more effectively and increases your speed uh, of recall. Which is those, why this technique is highly recommended for vocabulary learning. I have one quote for closing this presentation. This quote from uh, Herman Ebbinghaus, who has found this technique, he said, with frequent repetition, uh, the capacity of consciousness may be increased. Uh, thank you for great attention for doing the mistake. And here are some references uh, for support my presentation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give it back to moderator. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Zaki, for excellent presentation. Anyway, our topic today is more interesting from time to time. And yeah, if you have any questions for Zaki, you can type it in the chat box. Now we have Anina Rahmia Fitri who will present about improving listening skills through podcasts. To Anina, seven minutes from now. All right, thanks to the moderator for, allow, for allow, allowing me to deliver this presentation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? I hope you're always in a great condition. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given the blessing of free time so that we can gather at this webinar. Then to our amazing lecturer, Mrs. Arini Nurdayati MD, and to EDSA as the organizers of this great webinar, and also to the participants who attended this webinar session. All right, everyone, let me introduce myself. I'm Arina Rahmiya Fitri, a student from English Education Department 2020. Yeah, I would like to deliver a presentation entitled Improving Listening Skill Through Podcast. I divided this presentation into three sections. The section is definition of listening and podcast. Second section is why is podcast. And last section is about what are, what are the ways to improve listening skill through podcast. Next slide, please. Let's begin the presentation with definition of listening and podcast. According to Morley in 1971, stated that listening it involves auditory discrimination of our grammar, selecting necessary information, remembering and connecting it to the process between sound and form of meaning. In, in other words, listening is, is a process of receiving what the speaker says, making and showing meaning, negotiating meaning with the speaker and answering, and creating meaning by participation, creativity, and empathy. Then, what is podcast? According to O'Brien and Hegel-Himmer, 
podcast defined as online audio blogging or internet audio publishing. The podcast was, was first known in 2004. The term podcasting is a blend of the words iPod and broadcasting. In, in another definition, Bill in 2007 defined that podcasts provide content in video or audio files as a series of episodes with a broad and common theme called a feed that allows listeners to subscribe to the series and receive new episodes automatically. This podcast technology is available, providing a desirable choice to give students additional interactive learning opportunities as it is easy to use and inexpensive. Next slide, please. Move to the next material about why podcasts as a media to improve listening skills. According to Yustra and Putri in 2018, podcasts can make students know the present English. It means students can improve their English through listening to podcasts, and students also can listen to material every day with the authentically conversation. Second reason is podcasts can encourage the student to learn listening outside classroom. Lack of time makes students unable to learn to listen entirely. Therefore, the teacher can use the podcast and the media for the listening class because podcast is very simple to use. Not only that, students can control their, their own material so that they can choose what material they will listen to. And last reason is come from the enchant. Podcasts can boost the active learning and listening class. Using podcasts as the media can stimulate the teacher to make the active class. According to Stanley in 2006, that when the, the podcast is success to apply in the class, the teacher can encourage the class to be an active class. Next slide, please. And this last section is about what are the ways to improve our listening skill through podcasts. According to Anna Mary in 2021, these are the ways that can be used to improve our listening skill through podcasts. First, always identify a topic that is interesting to you. Just because someone else recommends a podcast doesn't mean that you will like it. When you, we are practicing our English skill, it is really important that we enjoy what we are learning, especially at our level. Using a podcast that is not interesting to us is ultimately going to be a burden and possibly even giving up on our practice. The second, listen for overall gist. It is meant to listen for the big picture or in other words, the main idea. In this kind of listening, we are not focused on the teeny little details, but rather understanding what the main messages of the speaker. And the third way is to think about how long we can dedicate to listening to a specific episode. If we have 15 or 20 minutes to dedicate to our practice, then choose the short podcast or a podcast that can easily be broken up into small components is our best choice after we have selected the, rest, the right podcast for our practice. And the last way is to fit our listening practice into our lifestyle. We have to make listening as a habit, something that we do consistently. Make listening as our routine activity is a good choice to improve our listening skill, for example, while waiting for the bus school. All right, we have arrived at the end of the presentation. Before I close this presentation, let me conclude the whole material. So the conclusion is podcast is one of the media that can be used to help improve listening skill. It is a portable form making podcasts flexible, which is mean can be used anytime, anywhere, and without any limit. So the students have many opportunities to learn. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. All right, that's all my presentation. Hopefully, it will be useful for us. Thank you for your great attention. Sorry if there are any mistakes. Back to the moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Anina, for the excellent presentation. That was such an interesting topic for those of you who want to improve listening skills by media like podcast. Now we are moving to the next presenter, Elsa Mayora, that will present about media pictures are good for learning new vocabulary in foreign language. To Elsa, time is yours. All right, yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks to Majorata for the opportunity and thank you to the audience for taking the time to attend this webinar. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Elsa Mayura from English Education Department. My topic today is about media picture or group for learning vocabulary in foreign language. Next slide. Uh, all right. I divide my presentation into four sections. First, 
the unison of vocabulary and picture. Uh, second, the benefit of using media picture. And third, two ways to learn English vocabulary to picture. And fourth, conclusion. Next slide. All right, uh, vocabulary is the basic language aspect that must be mastered before mastering English skill. There is some definition of vocabulary by some experts according to Hart and Don. Vocabulary is all the word for a particular language or a list or set of words that the speaker of language make use. From the definition, you can see that vocabulary is all the words in a language that are familiar and used by a person to communicate with each other. Vocabulary is the first basic important aspect of learning English by learners. By mastering vocabulary, they are able to communicate by orally and written well. Also, by having vocabulary, learners are hope to master for skills in English, such as reading, speaking, writing, and listening. And then, picture. Picture is a design or representation made by various means, such as painting, drawing, or photography. Next slide. Right now, I will discuss the benefit of picture learning and vocabulary according to article that I have read for in my daily English. Number one is easy to remember. The first benefit of learning English via picture is that you can memorize vocabulary easily. Uh, when you communicate in English, your brain will direct you to the image associated with the vocabulary you have learned. Number two is self time. Each time you look at the picture, they will gradually deepen into your subconscious and help you remember that you do not have to spend a lot of time to see the image. And number three, uh, easy to use in communication. Now, when you try to express yourself in English, the uh, images in the recent context will help you uh, visualize the image you have seen before and remember the words that are attached. It's easier than ever to communicate in English. Next slide. According to Dalin, in 2019, there are three ways to learn English vocabulary through picture. Number one is picture books. Uh, maybe you are taking picture books uh, for children, but being second language learner, you learn English just like native children learn their mother tongue. So imitate the way they learn, and you will see the good result. There are picture books for all age now. Uh, you, can, you can pick the one that you find suitable for your English level. So how to learn English vocabulary to picture books? Uh, read the narrative of the picture, and then learn the expression and new words from the narrative. Uh, if you notice any object in the picture that you don't know what they are in English, uh, search the internet for them. Look at the picture and try to narrate the story in your own expression. By this way, you can learn many new words at the same time and still remember them well because all the words only are linked to the story. And then it's easier to remember the picture than the new words you learned. More importantly, the picture is just a narrative. And each time you imagine that picture in your head, you can tell a story when you tell a story, like the reason for your new words. And then comic book. Learning English through comic book is quite the same as the way you do with picture book. The only difference here is that narrative in comic book is shorter, and the picture is usually illustrated in action. All right, uh, so this is how we learn, not learn any new words or phrases. To memorize the word, memorize the picture, you are starting the verse. This will help you to learn vocabulary easily and effectively. And last is flashcard. Firstly, you need to have a set of flashcard. You can buy it or create it yourself. Secondly, carefully read all the information about the word on both sides. Now remember to focus on the picture, attach it to the new word in your mind. Don't try to memorize the exact definition as this does make you forget the new word faster. Uh, thirdly, check regular revision for your vocabulary with our slide. Next slide. Uh, this is an example for the two book from this book in class five. And then, next slide. For uh, the conclusion, a learning vocabulary using future can improve the media picture can make it is thin and light, say that use of visual aids with an effort to make it easier to understand the language being studied. This opinion is further strengthened by Kelly in 1996, which stated that vocabulary is best learned when the meaning of the words illustrate. 
For example, by a teacher in exam a real object. The benefit to learn English to the teacher is that makes mastering the quality more interesting naturally. We respond better to image than to text and words. According to Nelson, in 1979, such a mathematics model proposed that teachers have an advantage in memory because they contain a greater variety of unique visual features than the words. All right, uh, next slide. Uh, this is uh, my references. All right, that's all for me. Uh, thank you for the attention. I hope much that I have conveyed this role to you. I'm sorry if there was a mistake for me. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks also for the great presentation. It's really informative for us. Uh, so, to all participants, if you have any questions for Elsa or previous presenters, you can type it on the chat box. Thank you. Now we move to the sixth presenter, Wulan Yunita, who deliver about extensive reading, easy way to learn for young learners. For Wulan, time is yours. Thank you, Marietta, for giving me opportunity to deliver my presentation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I hope you are in a good condition. Thank you for joining ESA's webinar on academic presentation. Let me introduce myself. My name is Wulan Yunita from English Education Department, Sriwangi University. Today, in this occasion, I'd like to, talk, to share to you about extensive reading, easy way to learn English for young learners. Next slide, please. I've divided my presentation into two major two major sections. The first is what is incessive reading, and the second is the role of incessive reading. Now let's move to the first section. Next slide, please. Have you ever heard about extensive reading? Extensive reading is reading widely, not focusing only on one text. You can read from different sources to, de to develop your reading skills. Extensive reading is a type when you engage with different re re reading material. It can be fiction, nonfiction, news articles, etc. Brown states that the reader is not interested in the meaning of words or sentences individually, but interested in the general meaning of the text, and that the main purpose is to enable the students to read more literary text. Now let's move to the next section. Next slide, please. The role of intensive reading. The first is develop your interest, your interest in reading. One of goals in intensive reading is reading for pleasure. Extensive reading is develop is building your is building self confidence and motivation so in read, in reading so the students become more effective language user. They are exposed to the language in a more natural and less structured. They get different and fresh feeling on the structure of language since they read for pleasure. The second is read, improve reading comprehension. Instensive reading provides an opportunity to see grammar in context, so students can deepen their understanding of how grammar is actually used. It allows to see the relationship among words and concepts. According to Chile 2019, learners must start the language with ease if they see how words fit together in the text. The third it is improve vocabulary knowledge. For vocabulary, the most important thing is context, the setting where each word is used. As you continue reading, you will be able to understand of, uh, to understand the different meaning of each word, as well as connect them to the general idea presented in the text. Essential reading is useful in that it will allow learners to learn unknown words. According to Watskin 2018, the implication of interesting for reading of essential reading for teachers is first in time classroom time in preparing for promoting and monitoring essential reading. The second is provide various material and ensuring the learners can find facts that they are interested and appropriate to their level reading. And the third is explain the benefit of intensive reading. The fourth is a point to over testing of reading. And the fifth is consider any comprehension questions like activities for language development, for example, vocabulary exercise. And the last one is considered to including 
a question focus on the reading process as well as comprehension. For example, did you enjoy the story? Did you find it easy, easy to read? Next slide, please. The most efficient method to teach young learners English in foreign language context remain hotly debated. However, extensive readings will, can be used to foster interest in reading for, from early age. With, with extensive reading, students will have the opportunity to develop new reading strategies, both in classroom under the control of teachers, as well as to apply new strategies on their own. Reading itself, enable to the individual to learn and learn. Reading is one of the important methods of continuous reading and this meeting with the requirements arising in time. As the quote from Dr. Says said, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more place you will go. This quote represents how important is it to keep reading because without reading, we will learn nothing. Next slide, please. All right, this reference is there to support my presentation. This is over me. I'm sorry for my mistake. Uh, thank you for your great attention. I give back to my daughter. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Pulan, for a nice presentation. All right, two more presenters left. So without further ado, let's move to the next presenter. Alia Azhar will present about Webtoon and appealing extensive reading material. To Alia, time is yours. All right, thank you, moderator, for allowing me to be the speaker for today's meeting. And thank you for everyone uh, for attending today's uh, session. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Aulia Char. I'm from English Education Department. My topic today is about vocabulary learning. But before we start, uh, have you ever heard of uh, Red Webtoon or Reddit? a type of uh, digital comic that usually meant to be read on your computers or your smartphones. You can read so many kinds of comics uh, from various artists there. It would help if you were uh, confused why I suddenly uh, brought Webtoon into the vocabulary learning topics. Uh, I divided this talk into four significant sections, uh, namely introduction to extensive reading, the second one is why webtoon and the third one how does it help in vocabulary learning and the last one is the depth of processing uh, extensive reading to the next slide please so what is extensive reading uh, according to paul nation an expert in linguistic uh, and teaching methodology, he explained the most possible or the most effective way to learn vocabulary is by reading uh, or extensive reading. Uh, extensive reading uh, is an approach to second language reading when learners read extensively. They read very easy, enjoyable books to build their reading speed and fluency. Uh, extensive reading means reading a lot of reading material that is the right level for the readers the vocabulary load of the book should be light and less than two words per 100 running words that are unknown, but it doesn't need to be always a book. We can found another kinds of reading material such as combi, manga, uh, or you can even read subtitles, but uh, on my topic, we, we will choose Webtoon. Uh, why using Webtoon? Uh, please go to the next slide. Uh, why read webtoon or manga in English? Because if it's one of your hobbies and you already spend a lot of time doing it, then it can be the perfect way to improve your English. Imagine if all the time you spend reading your favorite comic books became the time which you invest in learning English seems too good to be true, right? And then uh, According to Andreini, Webtoon can be fascinating reading material for students in learning because uh, intensive reading in English teaching and learning has many problems, especially dealing with limited class time and uninteresting material. Teacher can develop Webtoon as an uh, extensive reading material to motivate students to read uh, enthusiastically and enrich their vocabulary. 
uh, reading webtoon also uh, make you to be more used to everyday conversation in English. So extensive reading for low and medium proficiency learner is essential to use credit readers because it is written within controlled vocabulary so the learners can read without uh, being burdened by too many unknown words. How are the unknown words in credit readers learn? Uh, we can see on the next, uh, next slide. Uh, as you can see on the screen, there, the first one there is repetition. To learn a word, it is need to come across it several times. The minimum of times we need to meet the word is somewhere around seven or eight meetings. The more repetition, the better it is for uh, the learners. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, I uh, screenshot uh, some panel on Webtoon. There are some repetition word. Uh, the more you get repetition, the the easier the easiest it is for you to memorize the word. And the second one, there is quality of the meeting with the word. When we meet the word that we don't know, if we process that word profoundly and thoughtfully, the word will stick in our memories and vice versa. Uh, to the next slide, please. Polynesian also explained the depth of processing extensive reading uh, is work this way. Uh, the first one, there is noticing a new word. Uh, here, you'll be guessing the meaning or looking it up on the dictionary. And then after that, we'll move to retrieval. If you can recall the meaning of a previous word you've met before, it means retrieval is success. And then we move to wide meeting. This is just like retrieval, but on different condition. When we meet the word several times, the context can be different each time it occurs. Uh, then we move to the last one, elaboration. When we meet a new word, we'll give it more attention to analyze it. In conclusion, the most efficient way to learn vocabulary is by extensive reading. Extensive reading means reading a lot of reading material that is the right level for the readers. That's why extensive reading uh, for low and medium proficiency learners is really important to use credit readers because it is written within controlled vocabulary so the learners can read them without being burdened by too many unknown words. And webtoon can be an appealing reading material to help the reader enhance vocabulary learning. And to the next slide, here is uh, my references. I think that's it from me. Uh, thank you for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Olya, for the excellent presentation. That's such an interesting topic. So for those of you who want to ask Olya, you can type it on the chat box and for to the previous presenters, you can type it on the chat box too. Now we have Dina Nurul Fadila, uh, the last presenter that will present about make vocabulary learning fun with songs, vocabulary enrichment solution for EFL students. For Dina, seven minutes from now. Hey, thank you, moderator, for the opportunity. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dina Nurul Fadila, with students number 2021 and double I'd like to bring a topic about make vocabulary learning fun with songs, vocabulary enrichment solution for EFL students. From this title, I have four key points. There are vocabulary songs, why learning vocabulary with songs, and how to learn vocabulary fun with songs. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, vocabulary. Vocabulary is an important aspect of language learning. It means uh, that vocabulary is important for now, learn, and use, but then in 2005. Moreover, vocabulary is one of the four language components, which are spelling, grammar, phonology, and vocabulary. Wilkins and uh, 1997, 1992, uh, sum up the importance of vocabulary learning. Without grammar, very little can be concrete. Without vocabulary, nothing can be concrete. Even without grammar, with some useful expression and elementary words, people may manage to communicate at a, a basic level. When going abroad, people firstly learn basic vocabulary because it helps them to exchange information with native speaker of a given language. And then songs. Uh, according to Hutalaju and Hermann in 2019, song is one of the ways to communicate uh, that enables human to cooperate. Song is considered uh, to be a system of communication with other people using songs and songs to express a feeling, sense, idea, emotion, or thought. 
Some contain many topics or themes, such as about love, family, even that have been experienced, and etc. Songs can also entertain themselves from boredom, or child songs can learn to combine vocabulary, listening, pronunciation, and grammar. And Europa in 1997 identifies uh, that song can work as an encouragement for learners to use English. They may help learners in recognizing words and meaning, especially if they were support with picture and action. Moreover, they can work as a stimulus that motivates them positively towards language learning. Next slide, please. Okay, while learning vocabulary with song, EFL students in language learning, most of them are likely familiar with new vocabulary, uh, correct pronunciation, and meaning. This makes students bored and susceptible to ignoring the, their learning. Teaching in various ways can stimulate students learning is very important to make English interesting. According to Nato of the Age, learning vocabulary to their favorite song is also interesting because teenagers often listen to English songs of various genres, such as rock music, pop music, and so on. This can encourage students in their vocabulary understanding. Present in 1982, has it that for effective learning, the affective filter is must be weak. A weak affective filter means that a positive attitude to learning is present. Hence, teacher task is provide a positive atmosphere, preferable for learning. In this aspect, music and songs may be one of the methods of obtaining weak affective filter. A song may be used to present a topic, new vocabulary or language point, and then it may uh, also be used as a practice of lexis. And addi additionally, a song may arrange a relaxed classroom atmosphere and contribute to fun and variety in language teaching. Finally, songs may be said to encourage uh, the use of imagination and creativity during foreign language lesson. Next. And then, how to learn vocabulary, vocabulary fun with songs? Uh, there are procedures of songs activity. The first is pre listening. Uh, as, well, as a warm up or schema building activity, a student, what they know about American pop culture, you might also want to be in some video, music, or popular actor or singer to class. Uh, and then, share close activity hands out, like the example I attach in the screen, and have students read the lyric and figure out what the missing words might be uh, by using their knowledge of grammar. Have the student compare their guesses with their neighbors. And then ask for volunteers to share their guests uh, with the class. And then while listening, in while listening, students listen for the missing words. Play the play play the song once, and ask students whether they need to listen the song again. If they do, play it one more time uh, until the student finishes filling in the missing word. And the last one is post listening. Go over the answer with the class. If necessary, replay the part where students had trouble understanding the words. Go over grammar points as necessary. Also, discuss words that are still unfam unfamiliar to them by explaining their meaning uh, to increase their vocabulary knowledge. For example, what is the meaning of a word, the synonym or antonym, and etc. After that, students sing a song together to remember the vocabulary uh, that has been learned, learned and to learn the pronunciation of the lyric. Next slide. And the conclusion, uh, teaching vocabulary to song improves student vocabulary in several ways. They were the student memorization improved in finding the meaning, the student's ability to identify the words, and the student uh, pronunciation improved gradually since they had a lot of practice. Song as the media uh, could be used to facilitate the teaching and learning process. Besides teaching vocabulary to song improves student vocabulary, it also improves student motivation in learning. The students were enthusiastic uh, about following the activities such as singing, finding the meaning, identifying, and memorizing the words. Next slide. And that is uh, my references for my uh, presentation. Maybe that's all for me. I'm sorry for my mistake. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to my director. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dina, for your nice presentation. Alhamdulillah, all presenters have presented their materials. Hopefully, everything that has been delivered before is useful for us. Amin ya rabbal alamin. 
Now we are moving to the next session, that is Q&A session. As we can see here, there are lots of questions from the participants on the chat box. The, as we can see here, the first question to, third question is for, specifically addressed to Aki. I'll read it uh, one by one. So first question is from Dewi Indriani. I'll read uh, the question first. So Dewi wants to know more about Duolingo. She asks, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the Duolingo application? Thank you. To Aki, please. All right, uh, thank you to the moderator that has given me the opportunity. And thank you for your great attention, Dewi Indriani. Uh, I mean, for your great uh, question, I'd like, to, I'd like to try to answer. Yeah, based on the article that I have read, it is mentioned that as stated by Mulya at all 2016 and is stated in Amalia 2019, there are some advantages and disadvantages of doing application. For the first is the advantages. Uh, for the first is Duolingo is a game based platform for learning foreign languages and it can be accessed in the browser based application or the smartphone or windows. And then Duolingo has been released to use a mix of activities such as students can design, transcribe, speak and translate in a simple interface as they work on words and phrases. And then uh, while the disadvantages of the Duolingo application are Duolingo uses a computerized sound system for all of listening exercise. So the students are not introduced, uh, are not introduced to how to language actually sounds. And then Duolingo has no way of allowing people to communicate with any native speaker. Uh, I think that's all from my answer. Is the answer accept acceptable? Nui, can you hear uh, my voice? Is it uh, clear enough? Right. Okay, thank you. Now we are moving to the next question. It's for Akitsu. <laughs> so this uh, question is from Frida Yanti Aulia. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Based on your explanation that Duolingo is the most popular language learning application among the public, can you explain the reason, please? Thank you. Aki, please. All right. Uh, thank you again to the moderator and thank you for your excellent question, Vidayanti. Here, I'd like to try to answer the question. All right. Uh, I have read a website, a website, I mean, based on the website I have read, it is true that Duolingo application is the most popular language learning application among the public and in the world. Uh, because uh, the mission of Duolingo's company is to develop the best education in the world and make it available to everyone. And then, yeah, as I mentioned in the material, in the topic, uh, before that learning with Duolingo is fun and the research shows that it is very effective. With small lesson in the application, we can earn points and unlock new levels while improving our communication skills. And in addition to language learning as its core platform, this application or Duolingo application is also developing Duolingo English text as language certification option that is convenient, affordable, and accepted by thousands of institutions around the world. That is all from my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Aki. Is that clear enough, Frida Yanti? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, before we move to another question, I'd like to remind all participants to fill out a present list that has been provided on the chat box. Thank you. Now we move to third question from Muhammad Iqbal Nova Ramadan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. I'd like to ask a question to Eki. I have used Duolingo since I was a high school student. Although I answered all questions with good thinking, but the answer was wrong. Now I ask your opinion. Is there an automated system to answer every question? Thank you. Eki, please. All right. Uh, thank you for your great question, Iqbal. Uh, uh, I think uh, I think there is no uh, what, there is no automatic system in Duolingo, but we have to answer manually. Uh, based on our yeah, we have to answer manually based on our knowledge and 
and based on our knowledge and based on my experience, if we answer correctly, then the result also will be correct and vice versa. I think, yeah, that's all from my answer. For more detailed answer, maybe you can contact me. Okay, thanks for the great answer, Aki. Hopefully it can answer uh, your question as well. Now we move to another question. It's from Anisa Nur Islamiyati, specifically addressed to Zakia Turahma. I'll read it first. Well, for Zakia Turahma, that was an incredible presentation and a great topic to discuss. And I'm highly sure that this technique has been widely applied. But then why did you prefer to explain the application of this technique to flashcards? What made you interested in bringing this technique to discuss with? Thank you. Mm, all right, thanks uh, for the nice question, Anissa. Um, I will try to answer it. The reason uh, why I'm interested in bringing this technique to apply to flashcard because uh, the flashcard are the simplest technology, uh, one of the simplest technology. So, of course, everyone can make uh, that flashcard and uh, everyone can use them for all age, including kids, because of the, uh, the flashcard uh, safety. Uh, and then as already the mentioned by Noor in 2021, the flashcard is proven effective to use for learning the language. Thank you. Thank you, Zaki. Hopefully it can answer your question, Anisa. Is that clear enough? Okay, thank you. Now, the fifth question from Ninsi Yulianti to Aulia. I'll read it first. It's such a nice presentation. As you have explained, one of the depths of processing stantive reading, according to Paul Nation, is noticing a new word where the meaning can be guessed or looked up in the dictionary. Her question is which one do you think is better uh, when we found a new vocabulary guessing the meaning or looking up the meaning directly to dictionary. And I want to know the differences of the impact between those two, the success of vocabulary learning. Thank you. To Olia, please. All right, thank you Nisi for your question. Uh, so my answer is, uh, as you know, confronted with a text, uh, we may be trapped by lack of vocabulary and it enables us to understand uh, what the meaning and the first thing that uh, we can do is, uh, the, un the difficult word is by using the dictionary. However, uh, there are techniques that students can use to get the meaning of the vocabulary items. One of these techniques is guess the meaning of the context. Uh, guessing from the context, uh, it refers to the ability to infer the meaning of an expression using contextual clues. These are uh, can be linguistic or uh, situational. Uh, it means that uh, the learners should be able to infer the meaning of the unknown word using uh, the meaning of the vocabulary item that's surrounded by it. And then you uh, the learners also have to know the way uh, how the word is formed. And the last one is how the background knowledge of the subject and its uh, situation. Uh, from there, it can be seen that you can use both way, but, but the easiest way is use a dictionary, but it takes a little time where you have to stop reading first to find the meaning of the word. And I think uh, guessing the meaning can consider the most effective way to use while you are reading. Uh, is that clear enough? Let me see. Okay, next is that clear and acceptable. Thanks, Alia. All right, uh, the last question is from Siti Sara to Dina Nurul. Her question is how to choose a good song for learning English in the classroom. So Dina, time is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll answer the question from Siti Sara. Um, how to choose a good song for learning English in the classroom? Uh, I found the answer from the journal. There are uh, three principal criteria in selecting songs as adapted from Suri 2012 and Danik and Panic in 2016. There are uh, Firstly, whenever possible, EFL students are familiar with songs. However, most of EFL students frequently 
uh, select a song that are not appropriate to them, in which songs selected uh, are object objectionable in some ways, making song un unusable. And secondly, a clear and under understandable lyric should be considered. Uh, providing EFL students with song lyrics that they are not, not aware for should be avoided. Uh, in, the, in line with it, the content of the song uh, lyrics should so then contain profanely or bad words. And the last one is an appropriate theme of the song provide is a must. Um, many English songs nowadays contain negativity and inappropriate lyrics as well as violence. Again, song with negative theme must be avoided. On the other hand, there are also positive, upbeat, uh, easy listening, humorous songs available. Thank you. Thanks, Tina, for the answer. Siti Sarah, is that clear enough? Okay, you're welcome. And here, there is a question from Miss Melissa Sui to Dina. I'm wondering why songs are easier to remember. Thanks. So Dina, please. All right, uh, thank you for Miss uh, Melissa. Uh, I think why songs are easier to remember because the song is uh, fun. Uh, the song is apa, uh, easily remember. Uh, we we usually uh, listen the song uh, in every day. Maybe the most the most uh, we we in the in the in the age, uh, very, very like, very like uh, the song for uh, entertainment, maybe. And we usually listen a song with quite pleasure, contains uh, repetition, maybe uh, enough. <laughs> hey, thanks, Dina. Is that clear enough, Miss Melly? Sorry, ma'am, I can't hear your voice. Dina, can you hear Miss Melissa? Sorry, ma'am. So remember, I can't hear for school day. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Mel, for the question. Hopefully, you can answer your question. Uh, Alhamdulillah, all questions have been answered. Is there any question that you want to ask to the presenter? Because we still have time for this session. I will wait for one minute. You can type it on the chat box or directly turn on your microphone to ask this presenter. Okay, since there's no more question for the presenter, uh, hopefully all of the answers uh, are clear and can be understood for the questioner. Okay, um, let me conclude today's discussion. So nowadays the use of technology becomes a necessity, especially in language learning. That can be useful for improve our skills, whether reading, listening, and so on and so forth. As stated by Alcid and Pathan that to use uh, of, of technology has many advantages for teaching, learning, practicing, and assessing foreign language, especially like English. 
And yeah, that brings us to the end of this webinar. Uh, before we close uh, this session or the webinar, I'd like to uh, tell you maybe to uh, fill out the present list if you haven't uh, filled out that. And yeah, uh, the q and session is closed. Now, uh, before we leave this meeting, uh, to all participants, you can turn on the camera and we, I, I will take the picture first. Okay, I'll take the picture and one, two, three. Okay, next. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, great. Thanks to you all presenters for giving us such an amazing information and maybe new insight for some of us. Also, I'd like to say thanks to all participants who has joined this webinar till the end. I'm Nelly as the moderator leave. Thank you so much for your nice attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.